three of you sitting at a table inside of the Anglekite Adventurer's Hall. Now, this is uh, this place is like the primary meeting place where missions are dispensed. But right now, it's just the three of you, some of the top adventurers in the guild, meeting with the guild master uh, here to presumably be assigned your next task. This is a fairly like you, you do your task, you get paid. Uh, some portion of the proceeds from the task. Like, people submit their missions to the Adventurers Guild, and then the Adventurers Guild disperses them out to the appropriate adventurers. So, in a way, you're, you're employees, and this is your boss, essentially. Imagine it that way. Um, and the hall itself is this, like, incredibly ridiculous, ornate place. You know, it's it's obviously over the top. They spent a lot of money on weird, ridiculous paintings like that cover every inch of the wall in very poorly arranged ways. There's heads of myriad animals and things that look like they might be heads, but maybe aren't, or I don't know, like somebody could only figure maybe this part's the head, I guess? Let's mount it and put it on the wall. Um, there's, you know, any number of art of, of like not artifacts, but weapons inscribed and beautiful hanging around. And uh, this it's designed to be a show of wealth and power and everything the Adventurers Guild has done, and it ultimately looks kind of just gross. So the uh, master of the Adventurers Guild, who is going to be named Divrius Horn, standing there in his ornate robes with long banner down his chest and they inscribed with any number of like uh, runes and ancient tongues and it's just a hodgepodge. Anybody who is an actual scholar would be able to tell that this is just a mess. He basically picked things that look cool. Um, and you know, he's got many, many necklaces with pendants and emblems and uh, he, he stands before you looking as regal as he possibly can. And he says... Tegris, Newt, Jack, you three, you fine, fine three, I come to you today with a task that only your skills can possibly attend to. This is a vital task, a vital mission. Any idea when you're actually going to tell us what it is? I'm getting to that. Okay. The task I bring to you today is to bring to the guild he was about to say me bring to the guild an artifact of priceless power. It is one of a kind. It is rare. It is incredible beyond measure and an opportunity to seize it has come to my attention. We must, we must act upon this opportunity before we let it slip through our fingers. It is important to the vitality of this guild. Do you understand? You, you still haven't told me what's going on, so... I, I, I get that it's important. Further, 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 further. He, it's grumbling and he lays out a map uh, on the table. And he pulls out a knife and he stabs it into the map. And he stabs it over towards the western side of the basin um, on top of a few symbols and one picture that looks kind of like a spiraling tower emerging organically from the ground with weird little arms emerging from it. I have received word from those who live in and around cave water that the blind Torix have come to the crater basin. Yes, that is right. The blind Torix have come to the Crater Basin. I would like to uh, spout lore. <laughs> How would you know about the blind Torix? Well, my people travel all over the place. We have all kinds of lore about all of the different races that have been passed down orally, which means if I blow this roll, you can tell me anything, and I will absolutely believe it's true. <laughs> the traditions <laughs> were wrong. Yeah, go ahead. Uh... So you're rolling 2d6, and you're adding intelligence. Yep, which is a minus one for me. Oh, yes. Six! <laughs> so that means you get one experience point. Uh, awesome. Now, for, this, for the sake of this demo, and, and just to call it out in general, um, 
Normally in Dungeon World, you advance when you have your level plus seven experience points. That's when you can level up. I generally like to lower it for shorter games that aren't going to be full campaigns uh, in Dungeon World, particularly for Anglekite, because it helps you get to those epic high levels quicker. So five experience points is all you need to level up in case it ever happens in this game. Um, so go, you get an experience point, and... Um, yeah. What ridiculous, completely incorrect thing do I believe about these people? <laughs> the oral traditions of the of the uh, sky Vikings. <laughs> yes, that the Himmel mentioned that was it. Yes. Uh, about the blind Torix. <laughs> They're not actually blind. <laughs> they can actually see. They well, can see into your head. So, uh, I'm actually thinking that. Um. Oh no, this is good. Yeah, no, the stories that your people tell of the blind Torix are all stories of um hate. You loathe the blind Torix because the stories basically revolve, and and in some ways the stories are like stories of the stupid kid, because the blind Torix carry a treasure with them. They carry some the the greatest of all treasures is go go these stories, and so of course your people these Sky Vikings, would love to take the treasure. So, you know, they've mounted raids upon raids of the blind Torx as they've roamed across the world, and every single time they have failed. Every single time the blind Torx have beaten the crap out of your people, and sometimes they actually hunt your people back to where they are. Sometimes they find your people <coughs> no matter what. Like, they, like your people are perfectly well hidden, and the blind Torx still find them, and so they're like, there's this weird boogeyman element to them. Um, blind Torx? <laughs> no! <laughs> they are walking monsters, creatures of blood and death. Uh, they can see into your mind and pull secrets out of it. Ah, uh, Divrius Horn is looking at you. That does not match what I know. <laughs> okay. Very well. I turn to Practical Jack and uh, <laughs> Zagreus and I say, who are you going to believe? <laughs> That guy or me? Well, if they're so dangerous, this must be an awful, valuable treasure. See, that's how all of the stories start. <laughs> that is exactly how all the stories start. That is exactly the mistake how they start. that people make. You cannot <laughs> trust them. You cannot hide from them. You cannot steal from them. They are mm. destruction. They're blind, though, right? They're, that's not actually a lie. They're, they, they see with blind. their minds! Well, they, uh... Well, yes, yes, the blind Torx are known for their blind sight. Yes, they, they, they have honed the technique of seeing without seeing, but that's... They can light you on fire with a thought! Uh... I, uh... <laughs> uh... I haven't heard that one. <laughs> Um, I, I do believe, Newt, that you need to get over this, because the guild is giving you this mission, and okay. you will be taking it, no matter what strange fears you might have about the Listen, blind Torx. I will do anything else, literally anything else. Well, you will do anything else outside of this guild. Well, what if what if your top three guild members all walk out together, huh? <laughs> See, that's that's the thing right? that's not gonna right, happen. Right, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, so when you say that, when you say that, he says, "Oh no, they will not be able to resist <laughs> this." And he unrolls another scroll and. This shows this weird image of an orb, and it's got an eye engraved on it, but it's, like, all inked in, uh, and it's dark, and there's, like, emanations coming out of the orb, and there's lots of people bowing down to it. Um, and he taps his finger on it, and he says, this is what they bring with them wherever they go. This is what you will go and bring back to the guild, one of the greatest artifacts left in the world, the third eye of the Ebon Prophet, the last tool that can see the future of this doomed world. You will bring it here. 
Am I clear? I, I think I got it. We're all going to die. We're all going to die. That's what I'm telling you guys. And I'm telling you right now that what we need to do is boycott. <laughs> you know, we're not a unionized guild, but we do have rights. So, just curious. I mean, this I think, it doesn't just show you, like, the future of the world, right? Could it show you any particular future, or what's the story? It it shows the future. What? I, I don't... I don't... Do you want... It shows the future. <laughs> do you know so how done. much money that would be worth? Okay, I guess that, that part's fair. The, the and livelihood of the guilds depends upon this. And I assume we'll be compensated fairly, given the brain of fire. Of course, Sigris Grob, of course. You will be compensated very, very well. A full Please. 2% of the profits. Please do not tell me you two are considering this. He said a full 2%. I mean, last mission, let's face it, we got... A little less than 1.1. 1. 1. Zagreus, you and I, we're close. We get each other. And I'm telling you, this is a mistake. This is how all Newt. the stories go. Newt, it's we'll need your expertise to... We'll need your expertise to obtain this. Jack, Jack, you're like a little brother to me. And I'm telling you, this is way, way outside what we're capable of. You know, you're always on me about how we should go appreciate nature and all that, so why don't we go appreciate it all the way to go seeing these people and taking their oh oars. <laughs> Alright, I'll go, but I'm going to protect the two of you. <laughs> oh, that's perfect. Okay. And for 2%. <laughs> wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I am thrilled, thrilled that you are doing your jobs. <laughs> <laughs> you will go here he taps again where he planted the knife to the tower that is on the western edge of the crater basin the abandoned tower uh yes the one that well let's not talk about that um that is where they have been seen in that area and in fact headed in that direction there is some chance they may be looking for something in the tower possibly regardless if you make it for the tower immediately, you should be able to catch them, hopefully, on their way out, if nothing else. Okay. Am I understood? Sure. Yes. So much as you Brilliant. Can, you're sending us to our deaths! Well, if that's the case, then your loved ones will be compensated appropriately, as per the contract that you signed when you joined the guild. The contract that you signed when, the, when you joined the guild pretty much stipulates that everything you own will go to the guild except for, like, 2% of so, what you own. okay. I, I don't have loved ones. <laughs> right! So it's fine. No one cares if you die. <laughs> All right. Um, so what I want to do is cut to the uh, Perilous Journey. Let's see how this goes. Undertake a perilous journey. The way that this move works is you need each of you to take one of the three roles. You need to take the trailblazer role, the scout role, and the quartermaster role. The trailblazer's job is to get you there quickly. So with the uh, blind torques in the area, if they're out here to do something and you don't get there quickly, they may have done it by the time you get there. Uh, you need one person to scout, and the scout is there to catch sight of problematic things ahead of you, like, so you won't be ambushed. Um, and the quartermaster is there to make sure that you don't waste all your food getting there. It is currently going to be actually a four-day journey uh, from Anglekite to the opposite side of the Crater Basin. Are we talking by air, or...? <laughs> you can go any way you can go. Like, I could, I could see you potentially carrying them. <laughs> Which would be adorable. It would be. Um, I had to do one at a time, though, so it's probably not efficient. And I, I also think the guild could supply you with like beasts that will get you that. Excuse me, that you can ride there. Yeah. Um, 
All right, so I think I think I should scout because that's something I am good at along with my animal companion. Great. Uh, who's going to be the quartermaster and who's going to be the trailblazer? Do you have a preference, Jack? Um, I guess not. Um, I think I would be better suited for being a quartermaster. Great. All right, then I'm scouting. All right, what is... so each of you rolls plus whiz. Hooray! I'm scouting. You're trailblazing. I'm trailblazing? Yeah. You're trailblazing. I'm trailblazing. What are we looking at right now? What did you get, uh, Zagreus? I have a seven. And what did you get, Newt? Seven. Yeah. Seven, okay. And what did you get, Jack? Ten. So Jack's the only one who did a good job. We both did adequate jobs. You did fine jobs. You did, like, you did okay jobs. That's what the sticker says on your sheets. <laughs> um, all right, so that means you got a seven in Scout and a seven in Quartermaster. So uh, that means that you consume the regular number of rations, one per day. So each of you would mark off four uses of dungeon rations. And um, it also means that as far as scouting goes, you basically don't get ambushed, but you also don't get to ambush anybody. And then for the Trailblazer, however, you reduce the amount of time it takes to your destination, and I'll go ahead and say by a day. So because you actually get there more quickly, you also eat less rations. You only eat three rations, because it only costs you three days to get there. And it means you get there super quickly. Uh, so there's a pretty good chance you're going to catch the Blind Torx before they've finished what they're doing here, at the very least, if not, like, before they've even started. Um, so are coming upon the tower, the abandoned tower that you are headed towards. Uh, now th this tower, seeing it as you emerge from forests a, a little distance away, there are no roads leading to this tower. Nobody goes to this tower. And you might have heard stories about this tower. Um, it emerges from the ground, again, seemingly organically spiraling up uh, this weird substance that's like pearlescent ivory, uh, and it just emerges up and it has little uh, additional turret towers that come out the sides like little arms of a tree, but it's somehow gorgeous and like just beautiful to behold glinting in the sunlight as you're approaching it. Um, uh, now this entire area is cleared out. There's this odd feeling that like even trees will not grow closely to this tower. Um, and this is a very, very freakishly tall tower. This is a tower that's much taller than any natural tower could be. Um, so there you are, riding your uh, lizard beasts as you are coming upon this tower, coming closer. Um, nothing untoward caught your attention on your way here, uh, Newt. No matter how far ahead you rode, you were looking around and, and your bat companion <laughs> was looking around and you didn't catch sight of anything odd uh, on the way here. Now that you are here, However, you are a little bit ahead of your two companions and picking up on um, signs of hoofs moving towards the tower. Um, in like You've come upon those tracks, and looking ahead towards the tower, you see some evidence of like what look like wooden carts having been left at the base of the tower. You know, it's hard to believe they abandoned this place. But only a slight sense of crushing doom. Sorry, just trying to keep up a little levity. No? Fine. Whatever. This is why we should just leave looking. right now, because they've obviously already come and gone. Are you kidding? We, we sort of raised like this. We sort of a stupid fast trail, thanks to me. It's okay. You did your best, and heroically, we came out here, but obviously there was nothing to find. <laughs> nothing at all. Your lizard beasts are beginning to actually grow uncomfortable the closer they get to the tower. What? And, and I'm sorry, I keep, I'm going to keep asking unless I write it down, so let me write it down. What is the name of your uh, bat? His name is Dunkelheit. Dunkelheit. <laughs> so, uh, Dunkelheit is also growing uncomfortable uh, and uneasy. Obviously, he's much better trained, so it's not like he's going to fly away right now, but you can tell he's straining away, pulling away from the tower. 
To to urge your beasts onward is going to actually be fairly difficult because they are really resisting. Well, that's okay. As, as soon as they start to bulk, uh, ignoring the banter between its companions, okay. uh, Zagreus Grab will just dismount and and try and trudge the forward. Lizard man up somewhere, yeah. Sure. Like a you badass. need to have a lizard man up at the forest line too, yeah. yeah. Uh, the lizard, sorry, the lizard man, the lizard uh, horse beast. It's not only you are not riding lizard men. Darn uh, it. <laughs> so, uh, I mean, you're striding ahead then, Zagreus. Yeah. Um, and, I mean, g- coming upon the tower more and more, that eerie sensation grows. Um, but nothing's happening, and you're not really noticing any strange things explicitly. Maybe if you looked around intently, you might see something. Um, also, it's possible you might know about the tower if you wanted to try spouting lore about it. Uh, also, it's awesome if you just want to go running straight in. I'm perfectly fine with that. So what are you doing, Xavier? Um, I will try to spout lore. Because this is going to go well. So how do you? How would you know about this tower? Um, the tower is... Um... It's obviously got some negative effect on nature. Um, so it's it's worked its way into the Entling's legends. Interesting. And like especially I'd imagine Ernul's teachings, because if it pushes away nature, that's only good for rot. Right. <laughs> exactly. I see nothing wrong with this. Alright, so, so go ahead. Uh... It's a seven. You got, oh, very nice. You got a seven. So that means on a spout lore, I give you something interesting, and it's up to you to make it useful. So the stories uh, that you know of from your people refer to this tower uh, as the last bastion. And they keep referring to this tower as the last bastion. And they make some reference to the notion that um, there was a world before this world. And that world was pushed back by this world. It was eaten up. It was consumed and burned away as this world grew and grew and grew. And this is the last bastion of the old world, which is why it pushes back the new world. The old world is hidden inside. Um, It makes reference to the beings that live there of the old world. Um, Beings who were... In, in the new world, they would have been gods. And in the old world, they were just beings. They were just those who lived. And still, even they could not resist the oncoming crush of the new world. And so, like, those stories are resounding in your head the closer you get to this tower and the eerier the sensation that permeates you, uh, it becomes. Excellent. Are you just going to head on inside, or are you pausing um, outside? I, I'm pausing and turning to look over my tree, sh- my shoulder. Are you coming? I've gotten off my lizard beast. I'm probably still bickering with that one. <laughs> yeah, because Newt is really not wanting to go in, right? Look, look, everything near that tower is dead, and this is what happens when you mess with these guys. They're carts. It might There's even the- be their tower. I'm just saying, all that is unholy and evil in this world belongs to them. Newt, I actually think that, like, if unless you are really not going to go in, if, if to, for you to go in would probably be you defying danger, right? Like, you, mm. this is such a big stigma in your head, you've probably got to push yourself past it to even try to set foot inside the tower. I think that's fair. That's probably with mental fortitude, which is wisdom. Okay. Yeah, so I'm going to, as I follow them, complaining the whole way towards the tower, this is wisdom. Seven. So what that means is that you stumble, hesitate, or flinch. I will offer you a worse outcome, hard bargain, or ugly choice. So, I mean, what I'm sort of envisioning then at this point is that, like, Zagreus actually steps inside the tower. And we, the camera, we just focused on Zagreus stepping inside, and then we no longer see Zagreus. And then Jack is just like, come on, and then Jack steps inside the tower. And then you, Newt, are left outside, and you're like gazing up at this tower, and every single tendon of your body 
is screaming at you to not go in. And at that moment is when you see a little hole open up further up the tower and a head pop out. This this terrifying, horrific, nightmarish cow head with two <laughs> horns and nightmarish scars over the eyes. And it turns to you as if it can see you with those scars. And it snarls. What are you doing? I don't move. I don't think it can see me. I actually, I think that's actually a fair point. So <laughs> here's here's what I'm thinking of, actually, to make this clear as like a, a um, difficult choice for you, right? Uh, if you go inside immediately, it will know. If you stay right where you are, it may not actually detect you um, for whatever reason. But it will likely come down and start investigating. You might be able to get the jump on it. Possibly. Um, I'm going to go with the second one. Okay, so you're just going to stand stock still yeah. uh, while this head is, like, turned towards you. And it's it's almost like it starts sniffing the air, trying to hunt you out. Um, and just you're just perfectly not moving. And, and it's, it's incredibly tense moments, right? Eventually, it pulls its head back inside, and the little hole closes. I am going to bolt for the entrance to the tower, because they're in there with that thing! They are in there with that thing. They're all gonna die! Uh, yeah, that's great. So you bolt for the entrance of the tower. So the two of you who entered the tower, you uh, as soon as you stepped inside, there was this weird sense of vertigo. Like, you were knocked mm. off your feet for a second, and it's... It, whoa, whoa. And then you look around, and you see surrounding you empty space in which float rocks, each of which is covered all the entire... Every surface is covered in flowers. Hmm. No, I got nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Grace is uh, going to keep just uh, take a few steps in, because he's assuming his BFF, his best friend forever or its best friend forever, is going to be right behind them. Obviously. Um, and uh, it's, it says, it's explaining how this is the last bastion. This is part of a different world, knowing, of course, that this would be of some interest to Jack. But doing so uh, quietly. Can I, so, just as a quick aside, we didn't roll for the heritage move in the beginning. Can I still do that? Uh, I, I mean, I'm I'm actually fine just for the sake of simplicity right now, giving each of you two hold uh, just for the moment. Yeah, we did not roll for the heritage move. For, so for all that, we I called out the heritage move rules from the Dark Heart of the Dreamer. I completely forgot that important part of it. So just go ahead and take two hold right now for simplicity's sake. Don't worry about it. Um, I'm going to spend one to ask the shadows about this place. Okay, so that's one of your heritage moves. Uh, mm -hmm. And you turn, so yeah, and to be, actually, the, the, the light source in this place is really weird. There is no clear light source. Um, but there are multiple shadows as if there were lights around the entire area that are shining on you from different directions. So you have, like, one, three different shadows at the moment. Uh, each of them very faint, because it seems the light is also hitting those shadows. But uh, each of them there, and you can whisper to it, and it will whisper back. So what are you, what are you asking? I mean... Looking around the room, there's no clear stairs or anything. It's just this place. Yes. Right? Just a big empty space with floating rocks. It's it's this weird, like, grayish-brown color in the distance, like, as your sight goes off into the, into the far ways. And when you turn around, you know, the door that leads out is actually just this weird portal, right? Like, it's as if um, a part of the wall was broken off, and it's just on the same rock as you. Okay. How do I traverse the tower? You whisper to the shadows, right? Yes. Um, hmm. So the shadows whisper back softly to you. You must get permission. Okay. You must ask and receive permission from those who own it. Interesting. 
Thanks, as always. <laughs> Thanks, Shadows. Um, this has and been great. You guys are great. <laughs> that's around that time is when you notice this thing in the distance. Uh, far, like, far from you along mm-hmm. the rocks um, is this black figure, like jet black. Right. And it seems to have reached one arm up and hooked it into one of these floating rocks. And it swings itself under the rock and it glides through the air towards another one. And then when it reaches that one, it reaches out its arm and actually hooks it again around that rock and swings its way towards the next one. And it's swinging its way towards you. What do you okay. do, do? Sagrius? We mm-hmm. don't have permission to be here, apparently. Which may have something to do with the bounding whatever it is that's coming our way. Because I'm pretty sure we're in a tower and there's supposed to be a way up. You would think. But you unless think. we actually have permission to be in this place, we don't get to find the stairs or anything like that. And so how does one obtain permission? We have to ask it from the people who own it. That's all I got. Mm-hmm. Very well. Maybe the swinging thing can give us permission, but I, I'm i going to say it's probably more of a security system than a... Uh, they, they never seem to be the polite variety, the, the swinging on floating rocks thing, so I don't know about you. So it's coming... Closer very quickly. Yeah. Well, I don't suppose you want to talk about this. Hello? <laughs> you call out to it? <laughs> yeah. I don't oh, that's suppose cute. you can give us permission to be here. <laughs> um, yeah, you call out to it, and it actually... For just a split second, it pauses as it, its feet come to land a rock from you. It, it pauses, uh, and it, it looks directly at you. Um, so I'm going to actually, right now, show you a picture of what this looks like, because I have arts. It's the one in the middle, uh, okay. in case you're wondering. It's black. Can you see? Huh. You can't see my screen. Can you see my screen? Yep. I can see the screen. Yeah. Okay. So it's the one in the middle. Um, the that's big, the big obsidian, nasty-looking one. Yes, exactly. Uh, that is what is now standing on a rock, a little bit ways away from you, with empty space between you and it, uh, and it's pointing those two spiky eyes at you. Um, this rumbling voice erupts towards you. It speaks words. It speaks words at us. I was hoping to speak words to you and then possibly have you speak them back to me, but... It speaks words at us, but it does not have permission to speak words. How do I get permission? It does not have permission to speak words. How do I get permission? Yeah, so when you say, how do I get permission... That's actually when the one of these, if you look at this image, the one of these on the far right uh, appears above you, standing on a rock so that it um, is looking straight down at you and you're looking straight up at it. Okay. Well, to obtain permission, generally, we would first require an invitation into the sanctum. I'm going to go ahead and assume that this place is the sanctum. That's a good assumption. Okay. However, considering that you have come here uninvited, you have come here and brought shadows, you have come here and brought rot, I am somewhat disinclined to believe that you deserve permission. At this moment is when Newt comes running in. We have to hide, guys. It's coming. Thank you, Newt. No, no. I'm serious. I was outside. I saw it. I know you don't believe me that it's dangerous. 
Newt? We, what is that? <laughs> that would be our host. Oh. Uh, well, can we talk to it later? <laughs> if we can get permission from our host to be here, then we can traverse the tower as needed. You don't understand. Death itself is coming for us. I think that you're probably right in more ways than one. Where are the stairs? <laughs> we don't have permission to use the stairs. They're stairs. You don't need permission. You do need permission. So the one, the one floating above you, uh, the one, sorry, standing on the rock above you, um, says... Ah, yes, this is why our guests are rather upset. I see now. One of those. Well, I'm willing to make you a bargain. If you turn that one over for our guests to do with as they please, it would allow us to show them an appropriate level of hospitality, and it would be you giving us a gift, such that you would be made guests as well. You can't have a court. Like Oh, we, we have no desire to have that mongrel creature. No, 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 no. We want that mongrel creature. <laughs> and it points directly at Newt. That's very insulting. So, do we have an accord? Rotten one? No, we do not. Newt is not I'm forgiving away. <laughs> I'm, her, I'm its best friend. We're buds. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I, I do not I do not understand entirely you wish to be guests here I have made an offer to you to be guests here you, you do accept the offer that is the next step well not necessarily <laughs> The other next step is, I guess, would be picking a fight, which I don't, really don't know how it's going to go, but I'm kind of disinclined to give Newt over to you either. Sorry. Hmm. Well, that is most unfortunate. It does, of course, require us then to take action against intruders. Um, destroy. The figure waves waves its hand, and the big black one with the hooks yeah. hurdles straight towards you. What are you doing? 